Welcome to the webinar CIH exam equations visually explained and with examples. My name is Dr. Daniel Farkas and I am a certified industrial hygienist, certified safety professional and certified hazardous material manager. In today's presentation, we will go over the ventilation equations. If you have any follow-up questions, please contact me at daniel at danielfarkas.com. The ventilation section from the Certified Industrial Hygienist Candidate book has 29 equations referenced as useful equations for the ABIH examinations. There is also a note saying the list of equation is offered as assistance in taking the ABIH examinations. No assurance is given that this list is complete or that the use of this list will assure the successful completion of any examination. The variable used are the same as found in the reference source for the equation. No attempt has been made to standardize variables. So let's look at the first equation. The first equation is the volumetric flow rate in a duct. This equation correlates the volumetric flow rate, Q, in a duct to the cross-sectional area of the duct, A, and the duct velocity, V, of the air or gas flowing through it. The equation is Q equals V time A where Q is volumetric flow rate in cubic feet per minute or cubic meters per second. A is the cross-sectional area of the duct and it's measured in square feet or square meters. V is the duct velocity and is measured in feet per minute or meters per second. There are two common types of ducts rectangular and round ducts. But it's also important to visualize these processes in our minds. The volumetric flow rate in a duct can be visualized as the total volume of air or gas moving through an area per unit of time, which can be minute or second, as you can see in the animation. Round ducts are usually more efficient than the rectangular ducts because they are less airflow resistant. For example, what is the flow of a 8 inch diameter duct with 100 feet per minute duct velocity? The first step is to identify the variables. We have 100 feet per minute which is velocity, and an 8-inch diameter value that we can use to calculate the duct area. Since 1 foot equals 12 inches, 8 inches divided by 12 equals 0.666 and so on feet, which will round up to 0.667 feet but we know that the cross-sectional area of the duct or circle area equals P times radius square or P times diameter square divided by 4. That's because the diameter is twice the radius. And now, using the flow formula, we can calculate the flow rate from velocity and area. So the duct area equals 3.14, which is P, times 0.667 feet squared, because it's the diameter squared, divided by 4. And the result is 0.349 square feet. In the end, the flow is 100 feet per minute times 0.349 square feet which results in 34.9 cubic feet per minute. 
So we have to learn to do the calculation really fast on our calculator. And for this example, the diameter is 8 divided by 12, which equals 0 0.667 feet. We square the answer and divide by 4 and then multiply with 3.14, which is P, to find out the duct area. And then multiply with 100 feet per minute to find out the flow value, which is approximately 34.9 cubic feet per minute. Save time during the exam by learning to be fast on your calculator. For this next example, we have to calculate the flow of a 0.5 by 0.6 meters duct. This is a rectangular duct with a 1 meter per second duct velocity. First, let's identify the variables. We have 1 meter per second, which is velocity, and 0.5 by 0.6 measurements of the duct sides. In this case, it's easy and fast to calculate the area. The area is 0.5 times 0.6, which equals 0.3 squared meters. And then we just multiply the result with 1 meter per second to find the flow value, which is 0.3 cubic meters per second. Now let's go to the second equation. This equation is known as the constant volumetric flow or conservation of mass or the continuity equation. This equation assumes no friction losses and states that the gas mass flow rate at one point in the stream equals the mass flow rate at another location of the duct or translated, the flow increases when transitioning from the large area duct into the small area duct, or the velocity is inverse proportional to the duct area. As you can see from the animation, in the large area duct, the gas or air moves slower than in the small area duct. The same mass of gas or air is transported through the small area duct, but at greater speed. So the equation is velocity times area in one section of the duct equals velocity times area in another section of the duct, where A is cross-sectional area for ducts or into hood openings and is measured in square feet or square meters. And V is duct velocity in feet per minute or meters per second. In this example, the duct area of an 8-inch diameter duct with 100 feet per minute duct velocity is reduced to a 4-inch diameter duct. What is the new velocity? Let's calculate the initial diameter in feet. 8 divided by 12 inches, because there are 12 inches in a feet, equals 0 0.667 feet. Now that we have the initial diameter, let's calculate the reduced diameter, where we have 4 inch divided by 12 inch equals 0 0.333 feet. Now the initial area is 3.14 or P times 0 0.667 feet squared divided by 4 because we apply the formula of the circle area. The reduced area is 3.14 times 0 0.333 feet squared and divided by 4. Notice that the initial area, which is 0 0.349 square feet, is 4 times bigger than the reduced area. 
which is 0.087 square feet. So now by replacing the values in this constant volumetric flow formula, we have 100 feet per minute times 0.394 square feet equals the reduced velocity value times 0.087 square feet. Based on the calculation, the velocity for the reduced area is 400 feet per minute, which is four times the initial velocity of 100 feet per minute. The main idea is to remember is that reducing the diameter to half of the initial value, the velocity is increased four times. Visualizing and understanding these equations will help you speed through the mathematical part of the CIH exam. So now let's learn about the third equation. There are three pressures working inside any duct, static, dynamic, which is velocity, and total. The static pressure is the pressure of air pushing against the walls of the duct sections. The velocity pressure is represented by the velocity and weight of air. And the total pressure, as the formula shows, is velocity pressure plus static pressure. Total pressure, annotated with T and P, is also known as the head or energy in the ventilation flow stream and measured in inches of water column. You'll see the letters IN as in inch and WC for water column. VP is the velocity pressure within a duct, not to be confused with velocity, which is V, and is measured in inches of water column and not in feet per minute as we have for velocity. SP is the static pressure within a duct and is mainly manifested as pressure on the duct walls and it's also measured in inches of water column. This equation is known as conservation of energy, assuming no friction losses. It states that total pressure, which represents total energy, is the sum of velocity pressure, which is movement pressure, and always positive, and static pressure, which represents the pressure of air exerted in all directions. Again, static pressure, or SP, is pushing inside the duct walls, while velocity pressure, or VP, is moving the air in the direction of the flow because of the pressure differentials. Air moves from high pressure to low pressure. Velocity pressure is parallel to the direction of flow and can only be measured as the differential between total pressure and static pressure. Static pressure is expressed equally in all directions and is measured perpendicular to the direction of flow. Static pressure is the pressure a fluid would exert on its surroundings if it was not moving. Dynamic pressure, also known as velocity pressure, is the pressure caused by the velocity or movement of the fluid. For example, what is the total pressure in a duct pre-fan if static pressure is minus 2.25 inch water column and velocity pressure is 1.5 inch water column. Remember that the velocity pressure is only exerted in the direction of airflow and is always positive. 
Prefen, the total pressure is always negative. That means that the air flows into the duct system. So, for our example, we have total pressure, which equals velocity pressure plus static pressure, which equals 1.5 inches of water column plus minus 2.25 inches water column, which results in minus 0.75 inches of water column. So now let's look at the fourth equation. This equation is the mathematical model for pressure losses that are caused by internal friction of the fluid itself due to its viscosity and the frictions between the fluid and the wall. When fluids flow through pipes, energy losses inevitably occur. On one hand, due to friction that occurs between the pipe wall and the fluid. On the other hand, internal friction occurs within the fluid due to viscosity. Flow losses can be also caused by turbulence in the fluid, especially at fittings area, which creates obstacles for the flow. Although these turbulences contain kinetic energy, they do not transport them through the pipeline from a macroscopic point of view, but remain in place in the pipe. As you can see in the animation, the energy loss in the duct from point 1 to point 2 are due to frictions that are directly proportional to the pressure inside the duct. For example, one measurement at the entry point of a section of a ductwork has a total pressure of 3 inches water column and 1.5 inches water column at the exit point. What is the head or energy loss across the ductwork? First, we're going to use the fourth equation where static pressure at the point 1 plus velocity pressure at the point 1 equals static pressure at the point 2 plus velocity pressure at the point 2 plus the sum of losses from point 1 to point 2. But since the total pressure is the sum of velocity pressure and static pressure, we can say that total pressure at point 1 equals total pressure at point 2 plus the sum of losses from point 1 to point 2. So the head or energy loss across the ductwork is 3 inches water column minus 1.5 inches water column, which equals 1.5 inches water column. So now let's look at the fifth equation. This equation is used to calculate the hood static pressure required to overcome as air or gas enters a hood. Hood static pressure is a measurement of the drag created on the airflow through the ventilation system. The amount of static pressure that the fan must overcome depends on the pressure velocity in the ductwork. The formula is SPH, which is the hood static pressure and is measured in inches of water column, VPD, which is the velocity pressure within the duct and is measured in inches of water column, and FH, which is the hood entry loss factor or friction loss coefficient and is dimensionless, which means lacking any units. As you can see in the animation, the gas or air molecules exhibit a resistance to the airflow within the hood. There are some other variables that are not pictured in this animation that will slow down the airflow, like a grill or a filter. For example, calculate the hood static pressure if the hood duct velocity pressure is 0.6 inches of water column 
and the hood entry loss factor is 0 0.45. And we are going to use the calculator for this calculation. First we have minus, open parenthesis, open parenthesis, open parenthesis again, 0 0.45 plus 1, close parenthesis, times 0 0.6, close parenthesis, which equals 0 0.87 inches water column. In this example, minus 0 0.87 inches water column is necessary to accelerate air to hood opening to duct velocity and overcome any associated turbulence losses. So now let's look at the sixth equation. Since the velocity of the air in the duct cannot be measured directly, we must measure the velocity pressure first with a pitot tube and calculate the velocity of the airflow. Velocity in a duct is directly proportional to the square root of velocity pressure divided by the density factor. Note, pitot tubes require a velocity pressure of 4,005 feet per minute to show a 1-inch water column reading. So in this formula, we have V, which is the average velocity of air in feet per minute, 4,005, a number derived by the Swiss mathematician Daniel Bernoulli, which is a constant and conversion factor based on the air flowing at standard temperature and pressure. The air correction density factor, or DF, which equals 1 at standard temperature and pressure, and it's unitless. And VP, which is the average velocity pressure in inches water column. A pitot tube is more complicated than the one you see in this animation and will be explained in details later. But the main principle is that the velocity pressure or the head pushes through the tube and rises a water column that is measured in inches. That's why we have inches water column. It's important that the pitot tube is inserted directly into or parallel to the stream of fluid. This sixth equation is commonly correlated with the first equation, especially in mathematical exercises. For example, the velocity pressure in a duct is 2.25 inches of water column. What is the velocity if the density factor is 1 at 70 Fahrenheit and 14.7 psi? First, we are going to multiply 4005 times square root 2.25 divided by 1, close parenthesis, which equals 6,007.5 feet per minute. But now a follow-up question. Since we know that the velocity is 6,007.5 feet per minute, and we measure that the area of the duct is 0 0.25 square feet, what is the volumetric flow rate in cubic feet per minute? Since we know that the flow equals velocity times area, all we have to do is multiply 6,007.5 times 0 0.25, which results in 1,502 square feet per minute. The formula above is not listed under the useful equation for the ABI age examination but it may be necessary to solve problems. The formula contains DF as the air correction density factor 
which equals 1 at standard temperature and pressure, and it's unitless. R degrees for Rankin degrees, which is Fahrenheit plus 460, K degrees, which is Kelvin degrees, that equals Celsius degrees plus 273.15, and F degrees, which is Fahrenheit degrees, which equals 9 fifth of the Celsius temperature plus 32. Remember, the standard temperature and pressure are 1,125 pascals or 14.7 pounds per square inch or PSI and 530 Rankine degrees or 294 Kelvin degrees. Now let's do an example. The velocity pressure in a duct is 2.25 inches of water column. What is the velocity if the density factor must be corrected for 100 Celsius degrees and 14.5 PSI? First, we calculate the Fahrenheit degrees as 9 fifth of 100 and add 32, which equals 212. Then we calculate the Rankine degrees by adding 460 to 212, which equals 672. Now we can calculate the air correction density factor as 530 Rankine degrees divided by 672 Rankine degrees multiplied by 14.5 PSI divided by 14.7 PSI, which results in 0.778. And remember, the air correction density factor is unitless. Now the velocity will equal 4005 square root of 2.25 divided by 0.778, which equals 4,005 times 1.7, which equals 6,810.8 feet per minute. The flow is higher than in the previous example because hotter and less compressed air has a larger volume although the same mass of air is transported in the same unit of time. So now let's talk about the seventh equation, which is the metric version of the sixth equation. And we know that because it's between brackets. All the equations showed here in red bracket brackets are the metric version of the equation in front of them.